We're recording. You're listening to the Tune Up and Jam podcast. Ready? Go. Go, 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 go. Tune Up and Jam. We are now at episode 30. Can you believe that? 3 0. Episode 30. Tune Up and Jam. Tune Up and Jam. All right, tune up, turn up, get down, and jam. Episode 30, good evening, and Mazzulo Abuino, Francito. Yeah, what you said. Mazzulo Abuino. We're now on episode 30, which means that I'm, t- I'm, I'm changing it from welcomes to now I'm at good evening. Good so evening. now good evening is Mazzulo Abuino, and I'm not sure if I'm saying it properly, in the <laughs> language of, can you guess? No. Chichawa. Of course. Chichawa. I'll I don't know any... second guess. Yeah. I, I'm not... See, the way I do this, I don't go and research these things. I do it on the spur of the moment. And yeah, I find... How do you know you're doing it right, though? What if you're not doing... What if you're you're doing it injustice or doing it wrong? Well, I'm not talking about how I um, pronounce it. I'm just... How I find it. I look for something I haven't used yet uh-huh. in a language, and I just click it, and I see if I can maybe pronounce it yeah. as best I can. But I, I should probably do a little more justice to these things and find <laughs> out where they come from and everything like that. But this is the language of Chichawa. There you go. Mazzulo Abuino. Good evening. Good Even evening. though it might not be evening where you are listening to this. Uh, yeah, it is. It's, it's evening somewhere. It's, oh, it's always evening somewhere. But it's evening right now, and that's what we're going to do for the 30s. This is episode, episode 30. Th- episode 30. Episode 30. Episode 30 is the one that comes after 15, right? Uh, sure. 30 comes after 15. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. E- eventually. Eventually, yeah. It doesn't come before it. Yeah, can so you it's believe nice, that? Yeah. huh? So can you believe that? I know it's kind of nice, right? Episode. Yeah. I feel like we actually know a little bit of what to do with this stuff now. Yeah, a little it's bit, a little bit. And by the way, we're gonna get Chris back soon. <laughs> we keep saying it, <laughs> but we are actually. We heard from him. He's almost done with the busiest part of his life right now. Yeah, that'll be cool. So those of you who don't even know who Chris is, because there's been so many episodes. <laughs> he's actually gonna be here soon. You'll find out who he is. <laughs> who is this mystery guy? Yeah, this mystery guy. He's got a good voice. You're like, actually, we probably shouldn't want him back because he's got a better voice to listen to than the two of us. Yeah, that's all right. He's got a good radio voice. We just got kind of <laughs> voices. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so you know what? I've been a little bit more active on Twitter. Yeah, that's good. And, um, well, I guess, but I still don't necessarily know what I'm doing with it. Yeah. You know, at least you're trying. I am. I'm trying. I mean, I, I'm not completely incompetent with the technology Mm -hmm. but i'm not completely competent with the technology either but i'm getting there you know what i'd say as long as you're making contact with new people it's all good well yeah and and actually that's happened a couple of people have been um kind of reaching out sending some stuff sending some links some of them are robots and you can tell Mm -hmm. um somebody (laughs) it's kind of funny i i i didn't want to be rude but i i i needed to respond to this person in a certain way because i got this i got somebody on twitter who who sent something and it said something like it would make me so happy or it would make me very happy or the happiest if you would subscribe to me on youtube and that was about it that was about and it was like a link to obviously the youtube i don't even know if i didn't even click on it but it was the channel or whatever it was but there was just something about the way that was presented to me that I, 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 it kind of made me cringe a little bit. Like why? Okay. Are you in it? Are you asking me to make you happy? Or are you asking me to listen to your stuff and maybe enjoy it and then subscribe? I don't want it to subscribe to. to oh, you think it's just about like getting numbers? Yeah, yeah. I, I just didn't like the way it was pitched, and it's kind of like if, if I was on a. You know, if I was giving somebody a job interview, mm-hmm. there are certain things you'd look for to go, do I want to hire this person or not? Do I want to give... Even before I even interview them, I'd probably just look at resumes. And you know, you kind of pre-screen. Mm-hmm. This was kind of like a pre-screening process. And just the way that it was pitched to me, I, I didn't like it. <laughs> I don't think it's that. I, I know what you're saying. The whole point of, of just trying to get numbers is... I know, I know. That. But I, I just... I just I couldn't help myself. I just like look. Don't, I, don't I mean, know. I wasn't. I wasn't rude though. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't say mean. I just said I hope that you would like me to su- subscribe because we like your your work, not just to make you happy. Yeah. I don't want to just make them happy just to follow 
just to follow them just to make them happy doesn't seem right to me. I hear you. I, I want to like their work. So actually what I'm doing is hopefully they'll think about it and maybe change it up and pitch it a little bit better Are for other people. Are you trying to give people, people some uh, Twitter lessons? Communication well, lessons? Well, advice, yeah, advice for maybe, it's kind of a turnoff. Yeah. You know, I mean, of course it would make you happy. We know <laughs> that. It would help, It would make you happy, but I would like to be happy listening to whatever it is you have to to offer as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. Anyway, did, did well, anybody uh, um, any anything you want to share? Well, I was just about to say somebody did send a really cool okay. message directly to us mm-hmm. at tune up to, at tune up and jam on Twitter. Okay, sent us a a tweet. wasn't even a private direct message, and uh, they said hello from Paris. And this is somebody named Terry, who is from a band called Stereo, and sent a nice little link to a song. That I thought was pretty cool. It's like an electronic uh, dance, kind of like '80s new wave mm-hmm. style, and um, very cool uh, industrial sound. Also, I'm and looking up. I'm on, uh, like, I'm, yeah? on their, I'm on their Facebook page. Okay. Um, at Stereo Somewhere Official. It, it seems like they've been together, or at least uh, an incarnation of the band has been together since '82. It's a synth, some synth pop duo. So, uh, yeah, they've been around a while. There's some history there. Well, it's cool, and then it sounds kind of like an updated version of what you would think of when you think of like eighties, uh, like so the Pesh Modi, uh, maybe um, I don't want to say necessarily New Order. Mm-hmm. I, I I think of bands I don't know if you know of like Front Two Forty Two, um, Frontline Assembly. These are some uh, older I'm industrial not, yeah, not kind of electronic Nitzerab type bands there i guess those bands that i'm labeling right now are maybe a little bit more on the industrial side but definitely electronic dance mm-hmm. um and these guys kind of remind me peter murphy um ish kind of stuff yeah that, those are sure stuff yeah i wasn't into uh, too much of that yeah but, but so. this this, this kind of reminds me of it and i thought it was really cool so i thought it would be kind of cool if we played them and shared a little bit of their information well, why don't we? And, uh, yeah. Well, here, let's see. Let's. Uh, Do you got a song? Yeah, it's uh, this one's called "Waiting in Vain." Okay, yeah, this is the song that um that Terry sent from Paris. Terry from Stereo. It's called "Waiting in Vain," and it's really cool. So check it out.
give out some uh, info on the yeah you got that pulled up there can you yeah get i think so so on the facebook which is at stereo somewhere official it looks like uh, there's a website you can go to www.stereo-web.biz b-i-z and it looks like there's twitter uh stereo in solo stereo underscore in underscore solo so check them out thought that was pretty cool yeah pretty awesome they had um they sent another one too which was really cool uh, I guess like it was a remake of something from like the eighties. Is there like? Is it? Are we on loudspeaker too? Do you have the Do you have the speakers on? <laughs> no, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm here. I thought I was hearing myself outside and inside the cans. Our, our engineer fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it sounded like it was like a remake from uh, one of their early songs in the eighties. It was super cool. So check that one out. I like them a lot. So hopefully we'll hear back from those guys again and hear some more from them. So there you go. Cool. And if anybody else out there wants to hear some things or have us play, we'd love to play some more music. We're open to all different types of music, all different styles from all over. So if you want something, just uh, send us anything at Tune Up and Jam on Twitter, Facebook. Yeah, What's podcast Facebook? at tuneupandjam.com is an email. Um, even Instagram, too. Yeah, and on Facebook, up. just look us, look us up, Tune Up and Jam. And uh, yeah, we'd love to play your stuff. Yeah. So anyway, what, what else got, is new, Francis? Oh, uh, you know, Francito. What are you talking? You, you were, we were having a conversation, uh, something about uh, um, some tuning. Is it some? It sounded like some kind of conspiracy theory type of thing. Yeah, yeah. That What's was. That about? Um, so you know what a four forty is, right? The frequency for uh, uh, for a. Right. Well, that's the kind of concert tuning, the accepted standard um, concert tuning for a for the note of A, and that's what most instruments would, would tune to, like in an orchestra or even, you know, guitar, whatever. You would tune to the A, which is 440 frequencies. No, 440 hertz, sorry. 440 hertz, do you know what 440 hertz means? Yeah. We should probably like kind of go through a quick little background of what all this stuff is hertz is cycles per second okay so imagine a wave yes a wave goes up to a crest and it goes back down to a trough and goes back up to a way uh to the crest again back down to a trough and up to the crest and back and forth you can imagine a wave in your mind and just and it rolls past so right. you got crest trough crest trough crest trough crest trough right and the distance from a crest to a crest or trough to a trough is a wavelength. Okay. And with you so far. With me so far. And now if you pick imagine some sort of a finish line and you're watching a bunch of waves go past that finish line 
and you can count those wavelengths one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten as they go past the finish is it, line. Is it like a like per second or? Yeah. Well, yeah. If, first of all, just count them. Okay. okay? So one, two, three, four, five. You can imagine those things passing a crest to the next crest to the next crest, and those are all wavelengths. So one wavelength, two, three, four. Okay. Those are basically how many are going past, and then if you give it a, in a certain amount of time, in this case one second, that is called hertz. How many cycles or how many wavelengths pass by that certain point or that finish line that we kind of imaginary mm -hmm. finish line that we drew in one second. So cycles per second is what we're looking at. Okay, Mr. So Kaler. 440 waves per second. Do I sound like a teacher there? You is the teacher in me coming out? Yes. Yeah, so but was I clear? Was that good? Teacher. Was that good? Uh, it, I understand, but okay. what's the relevance? What's okay. the relevance to music and the musicians and all that good stuff? Well, first of all, A is the A4, which is at 440 hertz, which is, if you're looking at a piano, is the fourth A on the keyboard. If you go left to right, yeah. piano keyboard, you know, if you can imagine octaves on a keyboard of piano on an 88 standard 88 key piano, you've got the first octave starting with a C to a C. You got the second octave with that C to another C, and then the third octave and then the fourth octave. You have C1, C2, C3, C4. Yep. Okay, once you get to that C4, basically you're going to go up C D E F G A. Okay? That right. A, which is basically right in the middle of the keyboard, is 440. Uh, it it vibrates at 440 hertz or 440 cycles per second. Okay. Okay. With you. Yeah. And which we hear as the note A, basically as the tone A. Right. What okay? we've labeled as as A. What yeah. we've labeled as A. Correct. And then you know all the frequencies um, are adjusted relative to that pitch. Okay. So the proper B next to A would be a certain frequency, and then the proper C above it and the C below it, they are all adjusted based on A being 440. Um, and so that's what has been basically the accepted and standardized pitch for you know orchestras and all. basically all of music has been kind of wrapped around this A440 concert pitch. Okay. Okay. So what? So what? I read, and I don't think it's anything new. I've seen this before, but I thought it'd be kind of interesting to bring it up, that that frequency is an unnatural frequency. Like, not that it's unnatural that it doesn't occur in nature, but it's not, I mean, because it happens if you tune your guitar and it vibrates, it's going to naturally vibrate eventually at a 440 if you tighten up the strings at a certain, you know, with a certain... Uh, Tension. Anyway, okay. what they say is that the universe has natural frequencies vibrating through it. Because, well, if you know anything about Einstein, so I'm going to get a little bit nerdy here for a second. I wish Chris was here because all right, he'd, he'd have fun with me. You know, Einstein said equals e equals mc squared. Do you know what that means? Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. That's what E equals MC squared is. Basically, you can break it down to this. Everything is nothing but energy, okay? And um, if you get something that vibrates slow enough in the universe, it becomes energy becomes matter. Matter is energy. Energy is matter. And something that vibrates slow enough, which I think Einstein said is slow enough that we can perceive it with our senses, then it becomes matter. But it's nothing but energy. Okay. You're getting pretty deep here. I know it's getting pretty deep, right? Anyway, so there's vibrations all around. And um, sometimes when waves from vibrations, um, how can I put this? When they, when they, I guess, match properly is, is one way I can say it. Um, they create what's called a standing wave. Which match what? When they agree, okay. I, match the frequencies match. Okay. Um, but I want to say, like, have you ever seen? Everybody has seen. Um, let's see here. How can I put this? Okay, have you ever been walking down the street? And well, okay, I, I not even down. walking down the street. Watch the marching band. 
Yes. Okay. And you know how they all walk in step? Yep. They're all in sync. In sync like that, right? Yeah. If you think of waves kind of traveling back and forth in a swimming pool, okay? If they're all in the right frequency, you're basically going to get one wave that kind of grows itself bigger and bigger and bigger because it's the it's the um the frequency of that wave kind of um oh my god, I'm getting so <laughs> I have all this physics running through my head right now, and I don't want to get too deep in. I don't want this to be a science podcast. Um, <laughs> basically, there, I know, I know, I've gotten in too deep in this already. Uh, there's you can't leave us hanging. I know, I know. There's a lot of what's called deconstruction and construction that happens in waves whenever they interfere with each other. And if the frequencies match, basically, when when you know, if you imagine a water in a pool and you drop a rock and it sends waves in all directions. The water will go to the end of the pool, hit the wall, and then come back. Imagine that? Yep. Okay. And then when they come back, they're going to run into each other. And since they're the same frequency, they will actually make the waves bigger. Okay? Right. Now, if you were in the, in the same pool and you started flapping your arms and making your own waves, you're making different frequency waves. Can you imagine those little waves that you might, if you flapped your arms really fast, you'd be making little smaller waves? Yeah. Okay, those little waves would run up against the big waves and actually interfere in, right. in different ways. Okay, so it would be disruptive. Okay. Okay, imagine that. So sound waves are very similar. They're, they work in the same way. Okay, they're just going through the medium of air instead of, instead of water, although they can go through water, but the way we hear it is in air. And apparently there is some sort of a, a natural frequency that, that the universe and all matter kind of responds to. Um, Better than 440. And imagine 440 kind of interferes with that natural frequency of the universe and all of the matter around us in the same way that your hands flapping in the water would bigger waves in the pool. And so um, what it apparently has done is it's... It kind of heightens anxiety, fear, and aggression in in us. Are you saying the frequency 440 has? Yes. The frequency, because music is, is tuned mostly to 440, that apparently because we listen to this music over and over again, that it has an effect on humans in that it creates, like I said, it, it heightens fear, it heightens aggression, anxiety, things like that. And so this is a possible ex explanation as to why we are where we are, <laughs> to put it, to put it okay. simply. Now, the more apparently acceptable or agreeable frequency would be 432. In other words, 432 cycles per second. So an A at a slightly lower pitch, that would have a, a lower frequency, which would in turn have a slightly lower pitch to our ears. Because the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch, the lower the frequency, the lower the pitch. So this would be slightly flatter, a slightly flatter A at 432. And it, it would be audible. You know, it's only eight cycles per second, but you would be able to tell, especially if you're, you know, a musician. Uh, but pretty much anybody, but, it's 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 light enough that you it's it's flatter. It's kind of like the same way that when a when a you know fire truck drives past and the pitch due to the Doppler effect lowers slightly. You know you know that that right, right. It, it would be similar to that. You would you would notice it. It wouldn't maybe be that um, intense, but you would you would notice it. But four thirty two apparently is a much more um, gentle. And natural frequency for the for the universe, and if there's something called cymatics, c y m a t i c s, I believe, and it's whenever they study these frequencies and their effect um, and the patterns that they make. So you can get like a vibrating membrane that you can set to different frequencies, and you know just pour some salt or sand on it, something like that. And you can see these all over YouTube. And whenever they vibrate that that membrane at uh, whatever frequency it is, as they change the frequency, you'll notice that the sand or the salt, whatever the 
you know, whatever the substance is on there. We'll kind of like go nuts for a little bit. And then all of a sudden at a certain frequency, make us beautiful little like patterns. And then as they change through those frequencies, it'll kind of mess up again. And then it'll go into another beautiful pattern, but different, like all these geometric shapes. And a lot of them are symmetrical, like really cool. You know? So are you saying A440 is not symmetrical? It doesn't have the beautiful? Well, from some of the things I've seen, yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little distorted. Mm -hmm. But A432, like if you see this, uh, they've also, you can do this in water as well. They can do these in little water tanks and you get these patterns as well. A432 has a nice symmetrical geometric shaping, whereas 440 has kind of this kind of distorted. It's You can still see the basic outline of the 432, mm -hmm. but it's slightly distorted, not so nice, not so clear. And then the other theory goes, if you can see that in water, humans are 70, 75% water. So if they're getting this kind of frequency that doesn't that that distorts the the matter of the universe then that would have an effect on us and our basically you know our, our brains what do you think of that interesting um i guess my, <laughs> my question is so uh, all right i mean how you explained it it makes sense but has there been any oh wait wait before you said it what the, another another conspiracy there that goes along with it okay um, Goebbels, the the Nazi Goebbels, back in the forties or thirties, apparently, well, this is this is speculation out there, that he pushed for this because he um, recognized supposedly what it did to people, how it made them more aggressive, aggressive, and fearful. So what so did he do? The, in, in well, inject pushed for the four forty to be the standard. Um, frequency. Really? Hey, right. hey I, have From, a, I have a tuning fork here. Do 440. you? 440. Want to see if you can hear it? Here, here's sure. 440. Fascinating, Francis. <laughs> you can't really hear it. <laughs> you could probably get like a sine wave on, on online. I'm going to hear it. You're going to make everybody crazy. <laughs> it's at 440. We're all supposed to. It's, it's the, okay. All right. So go ahead. So he pushed for that, meaning what? Uh, that became a standard? Well, I mean, if you're thinking of the, the you know, at the time when the Nazis were coming to power, okay. um, what, how they were trying to influence people. Goebbels was the propaganda mis minister. Um, it would be his job to figure out how to arouse the most people in one way or another to get them to, you know, where they could kind of be controlled in a way. Okay. And... You know, they did go a lot with um, superstition and the supernatural, if you know a little bit about the history of the Nazis. But where, and oh. so the yeah, I, there's no proof of this. It's probably it's probably just a you know a myth. But there are people out there that that believe that he pushed for that to be the standard tuning in the music in Germany at that time, because as if the theory were true, it would heighten anxiety, heighten fear, heighten aggression, which is what they would probably feed off of. I mean, I guess this is probably, is there a way to find out where this accepted uh, tuning of 440 came first came about? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like, it, for, the accepted, from what I've read, it, there's like an international standard organization, standardization organization, which standardizes everything internationally. Like if you're talking about a okay. foot, a foot is a foot anywhere, mm -hmm. a mile is a mile anywhere, a kilometer is a kilometer, you know, like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, all that kind of stuff, yeah. masses. And um, so apparently they did this actually fairly recently, like in the 1950s or 40s, I want to say, is whenever it was actually standardized. Hmm. Before that, there were, you know, different places had their own standardized. Like France had its own standardized. It was like 441 or 443. Or 435 or something like that. But uh, then Austria had one. And Germany, you know, all these different countries had their own mm -hmm. basic standard. And then you got to think back, you know, even earlier when this music was written, there was no standard, really. I mean, tuning forks tuning forks came around, I think, in the early 1700s. But, you know, anything before that, all the Baroque stuff and anything before that wasn't written to any standard, um, you know, pitch or anything like that. It certainly wasn't measured. At a 440 frequency or anything like that. However, I think that they do 
uh, a lot of period um, orchestras, like Baroque orchestras, will play at a, actually a really low, like a 415A. Hmm. And then, but I also read even today this the regular orchestra even like even the 440 is the standard pitch there's no law you know that's just standard right. so you'll see that like the berlin orchestra does 442 still and like the boston does 441 and san francisco does like 443 and new york will do 440 and what's you know, the reason everybody's, what's the reason for that i don't that? know i don't know i don't know if it's just for the sake of not being like everybody else exactly you know i i, I really don't know i'm it could be also well i mean like you you if there's let's say there's a piano uh if an orchestra is is tuning to one another they have to if there's a piano involved they have to tune off the piano of course you know so let's say that piano has been tuned and it's at you know 441 or 443 435 420 whatever the hell, you know, whatever it is they have to tune to that piano if it's not a piano they tune to an oboe and an oboe gets its pitch. I think they get it electronically, and then but then everybody tunes from an oboe. Oboe. Okay, but, but I don't know why they choose to go 441 versus a 443 or 442. I mean, it's one one cycle per second difference, like from a yeah, 442 to 440. But why back, do they? I don't know why they do that, and I don't know why they don't just go with 440. But going back to your original point of this whole thing about the frequency not being um, what's the, how did you say it? Not, not being the, the most ideal frequency. Is that the, for lack of a better term, ideal or? Um, yeah, the, uh, mo it's not the most agreeable to agreeable. the universe, I guess. Yeah. yeah. To put it in simple terms. Yeah. I know that there's this, this whole thing. Um, it dis it's distorting to the universe. There's this thing called, I mean, music for healing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm curious if they use any of that type of uh theory prob i mean maybe that you can go on like youtube and you'll find uh -huh. like that that new agey type music you know for like, relaxing there'll be like an hour of it and it'll say like 432 hertz the healing the healing tone or something but that's not only they'll, you'll also see like 528 in there or something too or 724 or something i've seen different ones but they'll have like a full hour where you're just supposed to relax to it. And I don't know if what if it's I think it's not only tuned to that, so the whole entire music musical piece is tuned mm -hmm. off of that, but I think there's also an underlying tone that you don't necessarily hear that just stays there the whole time. Like a do you know what a sine wave tone sounds like? Yes. Yeah. So I think there might be that like inside at that exact pitch hidden in there. But I'm not sure. I haven't really listened enough to it or know enough about it. But I think it might be hidden in there too, so that it supposedly like heals you or, or regulates you, you or brings you do. down. It, you got to experiment. Well, well, the thing is, we're we're speculating a lot. Yeah, we probably find somebody who who uh, specializes in this field. Yeah, for sure. And see if uh, they have any kind of uh, they can bring some insight to this yeah. whole thing. Yeah, I'm given basic like knowledge of what I know and what I've read a little bit. But I can't that for sure like give. Everything I don't know. I'm just I thought it was I'm, a neat, but interesting makes me curious. Topic. Makes me curious about well, okay, if if this is the the way uh, the the human body reacts to certain frequencies, yeah, I'm curious to have a, a somebody in who could, you know, enlighten us. Well, I'm wondering if you know I have a I have a couple of students mm -hmm. that I have a play in a little ensemble, and I'm wondering if I should. You know, just start tuning things to a four thirty two and just see what happens. Just my own little experiment. social experiment, <laughs> right? I mean, like, it's, it's not going to hurt anybody if I do it. Just tune to four thirty two and just see what the result is, right? Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, don't corrupt I, them. I, I, the only thing <laughs> is, I have a, I do, I have to figure out. I have these little electronic keyboards, and I got to figure out how to lower that oh, if tuning. You can't tune it. Yeah, I'm sure I could, but you could if you, if they were. Um, I mean, if you know, if they weren't so cheap, but uh, well, they kind of are cheap. They're just yeah, you know, yeah, you kids, but I mean, they're not super duper cheap, but they're cheaper. So I'd have to look into it to see if I. Yeah. Can. I think you can. I think you can lower the. I think you the can. You can basically tune, detune, or tune uh, 
professional synthesizers. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, depends on what you have. Yeah. No, that'd be an interesting experiment. I'm kind of curious to see how that. But I mean, like the so you to to just kind of recap on that. The basic idea is if 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 you look at those patterns, like I said before, in those, mm-hmm. in those cymatics, I think that's how you call it, cymatic. Um, you'll see those patterns at A442 in water, or A432 in water versus A440, and mm-hmm. you'll see the difference in the distortion. Like one's slightly distorted, distorted, which is A440. Yeah, and then if you if you extrapolate out that we are mostly water, mm-hmm. then it does almost make you kind of like head tilt. You know, if you think like, okay, if it does that in water and we're mostly water, does that do something internally to our organs, to our brain, to our, you know, to our nervous synapses and all of the other functions that are, that are going on in our, in our bodily systems? I'm going to take one of my guitars and uh, change the tuning on to that. Just, just for the hell of it? Just for curiosity. Well, you know, if you also go online, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube where people are. A lot of them are just kind of like little snippets, but they'll they'll play like a little uh, s- part of a song in 440 and then play the same part of the song in 432 and then play another one, a, a different snippet in 430, mm-hmm. f- 432. And, and what's the point that, that they're, try- they're trying to make? Well, I've seen a couple of them. One is like, can you tell the difference? Uh-huh. You know, which do you like better? Um, that kind of stuff. You know, it, none of them are actually saying, I mean, I haven't gone through all of them. There's, there's plenty on there. I, none of them are actually saying... Um, do you feel healed or something like that? You know what I mean? It's just more like which one sounds better to you? Which one more so, sounds more comforting, more warm to you? More, you know, or d- I, the basic idea is that one of them you're, it's almost, I mean, this is probably being a little hyperbolic, but one of them you're almost supposed to cringe, you know, with the 440 is almost supposed to be like cringe worthy, worthy once you realize that this is what it's doing to you. And the other one's supposed to be super soothing to you. Once you realize the difference of the two, that's that's almost what that's basically where this is headed. So our you know, society, being, I mean, hyper, hyperbole <laughs> a little bit aside, you're supposed to cringe at one because it's supposed to be so um, distorting to to you, and the other one's supposed to be very soothing to you. I was gonna say, so our, and it's soci- only eight our society cycles could be so different, right? If this is true, <laughs> yeah. If it's true, yeah. If not, it's a lot of. Uh... <laughs> Well, I was gonna say. Anyway, well, I thought that was a pretty interesting topic to talk about. Yeah, it does make me curious. I mean, I have I've heard kind of like offhand something to that uh, something to that effect years ago, but never really paid attention to any of that. So yeah, I never yeah, tried I, I've I've run across that a couple of times, wherever you know, wherever you see stuff and however you see stuff, and I've kind of most like just shrugged it off. Mm-hmm. For the for the most part, until I saw it again recently, and I was like, you know what? A, this would be interesting to talk about on a podcast because, you know, we've seen it before. I've seen it before, but never really got into it. Yeah. So might as well talk about it. And then who knows? There might be a lot of other people out there that never heard of it. So, kind of yeah. introduce it to them. Or if there's somebody out there who really knows what they're talking about, yeah, please this. get a hold of us. <laughs> I'm curious. Talk to, to us about this. It's pretty, you know, because if it is like some conspiracy or if there is some some meat to this, or, I want to know. Yeah. You know, they, one of these mysteries of the universe being unlocked and or not if getting it's, enough you know, attention. Complete BS. Then it, yeah, we want to know too. I mean, that's highly likely too that it could be just completely yeah. because why would why would so many of the most professional orchestras in the world not even tune to not even 440? They go above 441, 443. I mean. I'm skeptical. I'm highly skeptical. Okay. Um, until I see proof, you know, I'm going to be skeptical. But I don't see any reason not to experiment a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's uh, that can be done quickly and painlessly. But I don't know if you're supposed <laughs> to see results immediately or if this is a result of being exposed to it over a long period of time. <clears throat> Yeah, but in, in my whole existence as a musician, you know, my reference in tuning is A440. I know. So do you have to play for just as long <laughs> I don't know. in 432 to reverse that? Or is it going to happen immediately? I mean, according to, I mean, I would guess you're supposed to have it 
have the results pretty quickly because why would there be these one hour video or one hour music clips? Hey, but hold on. In four thirty two. Yeah, but hold on. Yeah. What about the ty- the type of music too? Because if you're listening to you know some aggressive rock or metal, yeah, maybe a four forty is the perfect tuning. But that's a good point too. And and not only that, but what about the you know the tempo, the the effects that are on it? You know, there's all kind of different. What if it's yeah? What if what if you are listening to like thrash metal or punk or something like that? And it's yeah. in four. I mean, maybe it's more aggressive. Yeah, or if they do tune to what did you say four thirty two, and you just you hear it and you're just like, yeah, there's something weak about it. A little too soothing. <laughs> well, I mean, or more likely, like anybody, you would never know. <laughs> you know, yeah. like is that's where I'm thinking that nobody's ever gonna know. I mean, if you're listening to something, if it's in tune with itself, relative pitches, or yeah. everything, everything's in tune properly, mm-hmm. then I doubt most people are gonna know. Most people's ears are not trained, you know, and most people do not have perfect pitch where they're gonna know. Yeah, but see, if 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 regardless of their knowledge or their awareness of it it supposedly has right it was supposed to be un- subconscious effect. yeah okay. it's not even subconscious just almost um you know with the actual matter of things all right all right i'm taking a i'll, I'll pick a guitar and i'll uh <laughs> yeah I'll, do I'll it tune into that. yeah do it and just i'm gonna i'm gonna see if i can do that with um with the ensemble i got with the, with my students <laughs> And I'm gonna just secretly change everything to <laughs> to uh, 432. I'm gonna see what happens. If they, I, I swear, if they start behaving like little angels or something after that, I there's something to I, there's it. Some, then we're gonna revisit this. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and then curious. we're gonna actually find somebody who who studies this and be like, hey man, I got some, I got a little bit of evidence here that you might want to check out. So I don't know. We'll All see. Right. So anyway, I think that's um. I think that's good for this episode. What do you think? Yeah, that, that's that's something to something to think about. Yeah, that was a lot of information you threw it. I know, I know. I got pretty scientifically nerdy. Expect and, me uh, to digest. Well, because I also am really into physics, you yeah, know. So yeah. I get into the sciencey stuff sometimes, and I hope I didn't confuse anybody out there. I tried to be, I tried to maintain a track without going too far off the rails. But in any case, if anyone wants to give us feedback, podcast at tuneupandjam dot com. Or you can find us on all uh, the social media sites, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Hit us up. Let us know what you uh, want us to talk about or if you have something you want to promote or you yourself. If you're an artist, you want to, uh, us to play your music, uh, let us know. Yeah, if you want to come on, just talk with us for a little bit, argue with us, uh, inform us about something, whatever it is. We're happy to have people on here too, guests. We've had guests on before. We'll have guests in the future, we're looking around at some people right now that we would like to have on. So hopefully, we'll have some yeah. some new guests on in the future. In the meantime, we'll continue to play music that uh, we encounter, and hopefully, uh, something will um, strike a chord with somebody. Especially music we think should be heard. Yeah, that we like. Yeah, from from good people and good musicians with good minds and good creativity. All all about the art. All right. Later. Bye. Bye.